Now, I have always wanted to make an end grain cutting board with all hand tools. Um, I've never done it with just hand tools before and thought it'd be a fun, uh, fun challenge. Then uh, I was talking with Matt Haas, and the two of us were uh, thinking, you know, it'd be fun to actually do an ingrain cutting board with a pattern in it, maybe a bitmap of something. And so this was something we thought would be kind of fun. And uh, I'm doing it with all hand tools, and he's doing it with all power tools. And you can kind of compare the two methods. Uh, I needed to start by cutting out some ash, uh, Peruvian walnut, and paduke. And I found that about two and a half inches or thicker, I really want to use the frame saw uh, for ripping down. The, uh, the hand saw just goes a little bit too slow, especially in something like ash. The uh, Peruvian walnut, on the other hand, is a joy to cut. It really feels a lot like butter and uh, runs through it very nicely. The hand saw with this only about an inch wide works very well. Uh, the paduke, on the other hand, is a whole other story. Um, if you've never cut paduke, it is very hard and will dull a saw quickly. Um, I, it is very much like uh, cutting Purple Heart. But the sawdust on it is gorgeous. It's just bright, bright, bright red and uh, a lot of fun to play with. I ended up cutting all of this down into strips about three-quarter inches by three-quarter inches, um, about 30 inches long. And all told, it ended up being 60 feet worth of this stock, um, slightly larger than three-quarter by three-quarter. And each one of these would then become the pixels in the image on the cutting board. Uh, so the cutting board will be about an inch and a quarter thick when finished. Uh, this meant I had to cut all the pixels down to about an inch and a quarter. I made them a little bit longer than that so that I could plane them back to their final, uh, final size. This was a, a fairly long process. It ended up taking me about uh, two hours to cut all of these pieces down. And uh, it's about 600 uh, of these pieces, a little bit less. But, uh, yeah, it took a little bit of time. But the, the chocolate color from this Peruvian walnut just made it so much fun, especially when compared to the, the bright white of the ash. It, uh, it made the, cutting, the, the table look very good. And then I started mixing in the, uh, the paduke, and the bright red from that just... It made my day. The, the, the bench was looking gorgeous with this, uh, with this sawdust on it. But it was somewhere around this point, as I got close to finishing up with all 600 of these, that I realized, wait a second, I still need to plane them down to exactly three-quarter by three-quarter. I really should have done that when they were in a long stock format. Now I have to go through all 600 of these and plane them down to exactly three-quarter by three-quarter, but with those tiny little pieces. But at this point, it was too late to go back and uh, do it, so uh, let's figure out how I want to actually plane these down. But the cutting of this was just a lot of fun. I, it was a, a great way to learn how to actually um, cut and, and the feel of it. So if you ever want to uh, learn the saw, uh, make 600 cuts in sequence, and uh, you'll learn it pretty quickly. So once I have all 600 pieces cut to size, I need to actually plane them to their final shape of three-quarter. I put a stop onto my shooting board and that kept it at exactly three-quarter inches and I could plane two parallel sides together so that it would end up being three-quarter inches thick by about uh, seven-eighths by a little over an inch and a quarter. And I found this to be fun However, it took me about 16 hours to plane every single one of these. About 600 of them, one at a time, shaving by shaving. My calculation said I made approximately 36,000 shavings. Like this. But, uh, yeah. The upside is these shavings are absolutely gorgeous, especially mixed in with the chocolate and the ash. The colors were just fantastic. The shape was beautiful. And uh, um, I just really like shavings. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm a hand tool person. But once I got them all cut to shape, um, then I could start gluing them together. I found that it was better to glue them at eight at a time, even though the cutting board was 16 pixels by 16 pixels. If I cut them eight at a time into a bit, or all the bits into a byte, um, then it was easier to clamp them all together. I could line them up in the clamp 
and then just squeeze this bit, uh, this bite of eight bits together. And then I could clamp together two bits, uh, two bytes into a 16 pixel string so that it would be one row of the image. And uh, this ended up taking a little over a hundred clamps, if I were to do it all at once, but a uh, hundred clamps as I went. It was about uh, three days worth of planing and clamping. Once I have all 16 cut together, I could run across the grain with the plane and bring it to a nice flat surface. This actually went very, very quickly. And once I had one side nice and flat, I could use the marking gauge to scribe out exactly three quarter inches wide so that this piece would then be a final thickness of three quarter inches. Then I could put that back down on the table and plane it down to that scribe line. This uh, actually went extremely fast. It only took me about, uh, what, an hour or so to plane down all 32 of these uh, pieces, all 32 rows for the two cutting boards. So I was, I was very happy with it. And then you can start to see how the image will come together as they, uh, they glue together. So one by one. Now I can actually do the glue up and start to see this image. And this is where things really start to get fun and happy on this. Um, it took a lot more glue than I was anticipating, but uh, I guess that's what happens when you have 600 pieces to glue together. Uh, I just glued one side of each of the pieces so that I could lay them out and... Uh, it wouldn't be so much glue squeezing out. I just kept it a little bit heavy. I was very confident of how flat the pieces were, so I wasn't worried about uh, there being voids or anything like that that I'd have to squeeze and fill. I just had to be very, very careful at this point to make sure that every pixel was laid out exactly how it needed to be. And then you can start to see the image, how it will come out. And uh, this, this was the, the fun of the project, actually seeing how it looks. Now, I'm not a huge fan of low-angle planes. Um, I, I, I find them to be kind of uh, overhyped. But this is one time when I really would have loved to have a lower-angle plane. But that being said, this number four at uh, 45 degrees works just fine. And uh, it took a bit of time and uh, a bit of work. I think it was about uh, a half hour of planing each side uh, to bring them down to a nice smooth finish and uh, I could uh, then move on. Once I had both sides nice and smooth, I used a block plane to chamfer down all the edges. I gave them a very nice heavy chamfer and uh, I wanted to make it uh, look uh, kind of uh, beefy. Uh, I used a 300 grit sanding block to rough down the edge because it is um, a end grain, um, the, the sides are having to be planed across the grain, which means it's a bit rough. So the sandpaper kind of smooths that out. And then the moment of truth. I used some mineral oil to soak into it, and I would coat one whole side with mineral oil, and then uh, let that soak in, and it was about three or four coats on one side, and about two more coats on the other side, so that the mineral oil completely soaked through the cutting board and you can start to see how the image comes out and uh, I was getting very excited around this point. It took uh, a little bit to put the mineral oil into it but uh, not bad. Then afterwards I got a, uh, a food grade um, polish. It's actually made of orange oil um, and mineral oil and uh, it gives it a nice finish on the surface and also kind of seals the pores in so that the uh, mineral oil isn't kind of evaporating over time. And then you've got the final image. And man, am I happy with these. Uh, a lot of fun. So there is an ingrain cutting board. Um, wow, was this a great learning experience. And uh, you might be wondering, why did you make two cutting boards identical. And the reason is uh, Matt Haas from Awesome Wood Things um, is making a, uh, a pair of Pac-Man cutting boards. Uh, same thing. Um, and the bit structure is from the original game. Um, and so he's going to send me one of the Pac-Mans and I'm going to send him one of the ghosts. And so we will have a matching set for our kitchen. 
And uh, I think this is really kind of cool. It was his idea to do this. Um, and Matt, uh, this is absolutely awesome. Thank you for doing this. Um, so if you liked seeing how to do it with hand tools, um, you can check out his channel and uh, see how to do it with power tools. And so it's kind of a, a cool way of balancing um, hand tool work and power tool work and uh, seeing different ways of doing the same thing. So as I said, um, this was really a lot of learning for me. Um, I, I haven't made an end grain cutting board with hand tools before. Uh, with power tools, it's it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, it's easier to duplicate the exact same piece over and over and over again. Whereas with hand tools, every piece is ever so slightly different. And you have to kind of uh, incorporate that and work with it. Um, I'm very thankful with how it came out. Um, in the end, um, I made one mistake on uh, this board. Um, this 8-bit third row up um, was flipped, and it should have been flipped the other way. Oh well, um, you live, you learn, and I keep this one, I send the good one to Matt. <laughs> uh, but this is, this is a lot of fun, and uh, um, things I would have learned on how to do it in order of uh, operation should make the next one a lot easier. Um, but yeah, I am very, very pleased with how this came out and I'm looking forward to many years of uh, chopping things on this. So I hope you liked this video. Um, if you did, uh, go check out Matt's video and uh, see all the things that he is doing um, with power tools to do the, uh, the same thing, only Pac-Man. <laughs> And uh, also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are absolutely phenomenal and an incredible encouragement to me. And this would not be happening today without you. So thank you for that. If you did like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. And until next time, have a wonderful day.